America's evil genius, Travis Cook, with you once again with a brief comment on the 2012 election. I'm taping this on uh, Wednesday night, the night after the election, so we've had kind of 24 hours to let this thing set in. And those of you who have watched my uh, previous shows on YouTube, you've seen my predictions, you've heard me talk almost ad infinitum about this election and the run-up to it, uh, you know, if you've seen any of our previous shows, that I predicted a Mitt Romney win. I predicted that Romney, uh, at the worst case scenario, would win narrowly, but uh, possibly could win a landslide. Though I did acknowledge the possibility that Barack Obama could narrowly squeak out a win, I really thought this was Romney's election to lose. Well, as you no doubt have seen by now, uh, the exact opposite happened. Barack Obama won a re-election last night by, my last count I saw, about 4 million popular votes by around 100 electoral votes. A pretty decisive, somewhat one-sided victory by anybody's measure. And to say that I am shocked and many other conservatives are shocked is the understatement of the year. But I'm struck with something else in uh, the aftermath of this election. Uh, far beyond just the partisan disappointment you have when your party loses a major election. It's, it's something much deeper than that. Certainly, you have the, the anger and the disappointment when the election results come in, but as you stop and think about it, or at least as I stop and think about it, I'm struck with something that I have never thought of or never truly felt with any previous election in my lifetime, and really at no point in my lifetime, in, in any part of American history that I've lived through, and I'm 38 years old. Last night, for the first time in my life, I can honestly tell you that I have lost faith in the majority of the American people. You know, for all my life, I've always believed that the majority of the American people uh, were immoral people and, and, and knew right from wrong, uh, at least in basic terms. Uh, despite all the political arguments we have and disagreements and, and disagreements over, over the particulars of it, I've always thought that America as a culture, most of us anyway, knew what was right and what was wrong. We knew that if you steal, it's wrong. If, if, if you murder someone, it's wrong. That if, that if someone attacks your nation, you fight them to the death. Those were things that always seemed to me to be the foundation of what America was supposed to be. And, and for all the argument between Republicans and Democrats over the years, you still had some faith that at least the majority of people of whatever party believed in those things. However, last night, after seeing Barack Obama win this election and knowing the man he is, and knowing that at this point, frankly, America as a whole knows who he is. Nothing was hidden this time through. Uh, unlike 2008. People knew who they were voting for this time. And yet, more than half of the, of the voting population voted for him anyhow. That can lead me only to believe that a significant number of Americans, perhaps even more than half, have a severe crisis of character. That they truly do not understand right from wrong. That they truly do not have possibly the character to uh, preserve and protect and, and grow a republic such as ours. This is the first time in, in my existence in America that I've ever truly believed that about my fellow man and have had that level of disappointment and lack of faith in them. And it's sad, I, I must admit. But we are where we are. And rather than cry over spilt milk or, or place a lot of blame, which we could, we could spend all night doing that, I think the important thing is to look at what we do going forward. Not strictly from the perspective of how do we get the Republicans to win the next election. No, no, no. This goes far beyond political parties. This goes far beyond elections. This is not about winning an election at this point. This is about saving America. This is about restoring the cultural character that we all used to have as a nation. Because to put it bluntly, given that Barack Obama is a man who throughout his entire presidency and his entire run-up to the presidency, has engaged in little more than class warfare, has talked in glowing terms about taking from those who do the heavy lifting in society and giving to those who do nothing. A man who, late in his first term, 
ignored the cries of help from Americans overseas in Libya who desperately needed and were asking for military protection and he turned a blind eye to them as not to offend our enemies. One would think that a man with that track record running for re-election, even in the worst of times, not even to mention the, the economic disaster that he has been for this nation, one would think that even a houseplant could beat an incumbent like that. And I know there's an obvious joke there, but maybe a houseplant would have been a better candidate than Mitt Romney, but I'm not going to go there. The bottom line is, the American people, as I have always understood them to be, should have voted this guy out of office easily, and yet they didn't. Clearly, many of them bought what he was selling in spite of the results. Clearly, many of them are not only tolerant of, but evidently pleased with the welfare society, the uh, dependency on government society that he has fostered and increased. So that is where we are. So how do we combat that? What do we do? How do we restore character to those Americans? How do we re-educate them? Well, here's how I believe we ought to go about it. If you look at any of the analysis, any of the polling out there, you will see, not unlike other elections, that several groups went for Barack Obama by fairly convincing numbers. Women went for Barack Obama. Minorities, such as African Americans, Latinos, went for Barack Obama. Young voters went for Barack Obama. There is a criticism out there, and the criticism's always been there, but it really came into play last night. I saw this all over Twitter, Facebook, everything else. The criticism out there is that conservatives in the Republican Party are merely the party of the white males. And that if we're ever going to win again, we're going to have to appeal to someone other than just white males. And at least if you look at the numbers, and, and, and I hate to break Americans down into groups like that. I, I try to think of us all as Americans. I think we're all the same. But your pollsters and political analysts don't like to do that. So if you look at the numbers, they have a point. Yes, the white males do vote overwhelmingly for the Republican Party at this point. Yes, the females tend to vote for the Democrats. The minorities overwhelmingly vote for the Democrats. The youth overwhelmingly vote for the Democrats. It's always been that way, it seems, but it has been more so now than ever before, and, and it vaulted Obama into a second term. So clearly, we on the right have to appeal to these groups, women, minorities, youth voters, so how do we do it? The first thought and the conventional wisdom of a lot of the uh, pontificators out there and those who run campaigns and, and those who uh, get paid to consult and do those sort of things, the conventional wisdom is, well, the conservatives, the Republicans have to go out and meet these people where they are. That, they have to, that we have to adjust our positions to appeal to those groups and to those voters. While that's probably the easiest thing to think of, I tend to disagree with that idea. Sure, that might win you an election once in a while, but in the long term, I think it does you more harm than good. Not only as a political party, but more importantly, to the nation as a whole. Because quite frankly, these people are voting incorrectly. Not in terms of, not in terms of party per se, but they are voting incorrectly in terms of their morality and in terms of their character. They need to be re-educated. And the way I look at it is that, I'm not going to say it's easy to do, but there, there's a tremendous story we can tell these people that maybe we haven't told as well as we should have. When you launch the criticism that conservatives appeal only to white male voters and that you see few people of color, though there are a rising number of them, few people of color, few women, few Latinos, joining the conservative movement. The inference is that white males or that Latinos or blacks or whoever each have some individual set of characteristics in terms of uh, what they expect out of a candidate or what they want out of government, that they each have some individual set of, of wants and needs that is unique to that group. I do not believe that. I believe we are all Americans and we all have the same wants and needs. Instead of looking at what drives us apart and what makes us different, maybe for once we should be the party 
that trumpets what makes us all the same. After all, why does a white male typically vote for the conservative movement? Or why does a white male typically vote Republican? Not that I've ever really thought of it before, but why do we do it? Well, people who vote for Republicans typically do so because they believe in individual liberty. They believe in keeping as much of what they earn as they can, the fruits of their labor. They believe in providing as, as good of a life for their families as they can and being able to pass on a little something to them if they're able to do so. They believe in creating a life for themselves and their families far beyond and, and above the idea of creating a life for society as a whole. Their, their families and themselves are a higher priority to them than society as a whole. They believe in strong national defense. That's why you vote conservative. That's why you vote Republican. Well, when you sit and think about it, under, under those circumstances, aren't those the same things that everybody wants, not just white males? Don't most women want to provide a good lifestyle for their family and make as much money as they can, just like the evil white males do? Sure, of course they do. Don't African Americans want their nation and their land to be protected just like white males do? Sure, of course. Don't Latinos want their children to have a better shot at life than they did uh, when they were growing up? Of course they do. When you strip away all the labels and you strip away all the vilification from the left, conservatives stand for what all human beings stand for instinctively. The problem is that that story either has not been told to women and minorities and young voters, or if it has, it's been drowned out by pop culture, education, and the media. So how do we do that? How do we fight that? How do we change that? Well, you're not going to get rid of the media overnight. The horrific educational system in this country that does this brainwashing is so entrenched right now that it's going to take a while to get them out of, out of there. But... I think there is an answer. Before his death, the late great Andrew Breitbart talked about how conservatives need to win the culture war. And I know that's an uphill climb, but he's absolutely right. At the very least, even if we don't win the culture war, we should at least start showing up for it. And what that means is that we need to go beyond just giving stats and statistics and figures and history and explaining logically why conservatism works. And granted, that worked on most of us who are conservatives now. It was an easy sell for us. But these women and minorities and young people who have been through this educational system and who have had democratic politicians fill their heads with so much garbage over the years, they have a hard time understanding the pure logic that we're giving them. So you have to speak to them in their own terms. What I'm going to propose is something a little bit radical. I think in addition to giving people stats and statistics and figures and history and so forth, we have to speak to them in a language that they'll understand. We also have to have some humor with this. We need to get out there in the pop culture. We need to have some conservative, uh, conservative comedians who have a little bit of an irreverent sense of humor and will make a little bit of fun of the left and will teach while having fun. Great example on the left is Jon Stewart. He's perceived as a cool guy. His show is hip, but he pushes a liberal agenda, and I must say he does it rather well. And while I disagree with most everything Jon Stewart says, you cannot say he's boring. You cannot say that his show will put you to sleep, and we need some of that on our side. You know, I go back to the 1964 presidential campaign and Barry Goldwater, such a great candidate for president, he had ideas that could galvanize the youth, and he had ideas that could galvanize the conservatives, but his one misgiving was... He'd get these big baseball stadiums full of people to hear him speak, and then he'd start speaking and he'd bore them to tears. Because he'd get so hung up in, in the minutia and the facts and the figures. He didn't know how to make it palatable. And that's what we need. People that can make this palatable. We need a John Stewart on the right. We need TV producers on the right and writers on the right and musicians on the right, and filmmakers on the right. We're starting to get them, but we need to really search for that more and more because that is where you're going to get these groups. That's where you're going to get the women and the minorities and the youth. That's where you're going to speak to them. You've got to go to where they are. I'll give you a great example from my youth. We used to have this to a degree, and you might not think of this, but Rush Limbaugh, when he first went national, 
He really had that ability. I'm not saying that he doesn't have it now, but it seemed to be more cutting edge back then. And I was a young man back in the early 90s when Limbaugh really hit his stride. And yes, there was a uniqueness having a conservative on the radio, and I get that, but what really made Limbaugh special, what really made him appeal to a lot of people my age at that time was that in addition to analyzing the news, this guy had a wicked sense of humor. This guy was irreverent. He was cutting edge. He wasn't afraid to make the joke. He didn't care what you thought about it. And at the end of it all, he could break down some very complex principles into plain, everyday explanations that were easily understood. It was a great way to bring young people like me at the time, who were just entering politics and didn't didn't really know our way yet, it gave us a great opportunity to truly understand conservatism. We need something like that again. We need someone like that again. Well, we need more than just one someone. We need a lot of someones like that. We need to speak to these groups of people, women, minorities, young people, where they are. We've got to get them in pop culture because a lot of them, that's all they ever see. They're not going to pay attention, many of them, to what we say in a news program or even on a, on a blog like this. We have to have those comedians out there and those musicians. And we've got to, frankly, we've got to make it cool and hip to be a conservative again. It was in the 1980s. We can do it again. Now we're not going to get all the women. We're not going to get all the, the minorities. We're not going to get all the young folks. But those in those groups who are perceptive and intelligent and who are open to different modes of thought we'll get them because the bottom line is if you're an intelligent person and you're a person who can think when you are exposed to conservatism and you truly understand it you cannot turn away from it that's the one thing that we have in our advantage if you truly understand conservatism and why it makes sense then you become a conservative and the only reason these groups have not become conservatives at least the best and brightest among them is simply because we have not explained it to them yet in a way that they can understand. That is the challenge going forward. It's not about politics day to day. Well, it is about politics, but in order to get more people on our side, it's not exclusively about politics. It's about showing up for the culture war and winning it. Folks, we'll be back later on with more analysis of this, but I wanted to give you my first impressions of this, and I think... That's where the war is now, and it is a cultural war. We've got to get out there in the pop culture, and we've got to show up. Previous generations of conservatives just have not done that. We must. Otherwise, we will lose the women. We will lose the minorities. We will lose the youth forever. This is Travis Cook, America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.